Where are we today? January 28th, 2019. I caught somebody. Yeah. I caught someone. Ah. <laughs> um, we have a few things um, to discuss. We'll get to public uh, discussion in a second. Um, after public discussion, we have um, introduced our new health inspector, which would be nice. We have a chair report, we have a health agent report, residential um, roadside use, discussion on the pesticide regulation in tree lawns, and then review of the minutes from December 17th. So with that, I will open the floor to public input. I see one person, if they are willing to, to so yeah. speak. Just Hi. make sure you know the routine, right? Yeah. Yep. Hi. State your name and address. I live at 11 GMT in town, 365, and I'm basically here in support of the pesticide regulation. I actually had a question because um, on the Board of Health webpage, it indicates that there's a public hearing on them, but the date is 2017. So I was a little unclear. This was a public hearing on them, and the um, PDF that's on there of the regs is from 2017. I wanted to know if they had changed it all. Um, and it would be possible to get a copy if they have changed, so they make any Yeah, I think that's just well, on maybe. it, Gina, from a timeline standpoint so to show you the progression. The regs are the same as 2017. I, I thought that when we talked last time, what we have online is the regs that, that are we, yes. we've been discussing, right? Yes. So there's yeah. been no changes, I no think. No changes. Right, okay. okay. So, I don't know if we're going to have a big discussion on it or where it's at or... I know that the select board, when I was there, somebody asked a question about them, and they sent them back to you. So it sounds like right. it's been going back and forth, and nothing's been happening. Well, I, I think it's been in, it's been in our, our ballpark the whole time. Oh. Um, so the select board's really just been waiting on us. And, and we had a couple things in the fall that we got sidetracked on that we that needed attention right away. Um, and we picked it, trying to pick the ball back up um, right now to get these going. Well, there had been some discussion earlier about doing some outreach, and it being February almost. Spring coming, so. Yeah, you know, yeah, we, we know the clock is ticking. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Gina. Yeah, so thank you. Um, okay, uh, Laura, it looks like the next item is yours. I'll let you do the introductions. Okay, uh, this is Cami DeMello. She started with us on December 3rd. Cami is currently finishing her online master's with UMass Amherst for public health. And she did work, uh, she also works at Trader Joe, nice little food <laughs> establishment that we all love. Um, and she did a part term internship with um, MDPH under the local health internship program, and she worked out of the Bedford office. Yes, I did. Welcome. Yeah. Oh, let Cammie tell, Cammie tell you a little bit more. Yes, so um, with that, I was one of 35 graduate students who was selected for the local public health um, internship program. So I was placed in Bedford. Um, I got to see a lot of things, some housing inspections, um, you know, food establishment inspections, um, we did some pools, camps, that sort of thing. Um, so I have some experience with that. I also have um, my bachelor's in um, food and nutrition. So um, just you know, some experience with some uh, food safety and things of that nature as well. And I'll be finishing up my master's. I have one course left um, in the spring, so that'll be up in May. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, congratulations, <laughs> right, welcome. It's been a long road, but I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> well, I, 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 I didn't catch what your master's is in. Uh, that's public health, public oh. health practice. Right. Yes. All right, well, welcome. Um, I just have a, two brief things from a chair report standpoint. Um, Actually, Kevin, yes. sorry. Um, we just need to appoint her as acting for the board so oh, that she can start me. doing inspections and things. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I would like to nominate Cami DeMello to be our, our health inspector. Second. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Great, thank you so Three zero. Much. I appreciate that. Thank you for the reminder, Laura. Um, and one quick thing, I'm going to be um, meeting with uh, our car, so they have their board meeting coming up this Thursday. It's the first one I'm able to attend since uh, I was been appointed as the liaison for them, so I'll, I'll, I won't have a, I don't have an update on that, but I know they have um, particular item um, items that they're going to be talking about in regards to uh, that kind of tie into public health a little bit. So I'll have a better update at our next meeting from that one. The second one was um, there's we're in the process right now as a town of 
uh, replacing um, what are, what's the um, reference gene and replacing the pup stations, right? Yes. Okay, so there's one down on Charles Street, corner of Charles and Haverhill. You've probably seen a ton of work going on down around there. Apparently part of the process is that they do borings to determine if there's legend there, and when they do the borings, they also do um, soil testing at the same time. So they did have trace elements of actually come back in some of their um, uh, testing of the soil. They don't obviously have any inkling of an idea of how that is in the soil, but that's why you see such a big production going on down in that corner right now. Is so, arsenic. Oh. It, it, it was used in the past and historically used. Interesting, well, this, this is an interesting lead into our next discussion, Gina. And, 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 and no, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch what you mean. They're, they're pumping stations for sewer? Yes. Okay. Um, so there is a company, uh, CDM Smith, uh, sent us out a letter. Obviously, DEP was uh, informed, and all the soil that had since been removed that was brought over to the DPW um, had also been tested. Uh, and they found some, I think some portions of, if I recall the emails correctly from the engineers, some portions had um, trace elements, some portions had um, el uh, levels that were above what you would normally find acceptable. Um, and then that, but that everything right now is being handled um, correctly, and there is a um, uh, a plan in place, a release abatement measure plan in place, uh, in, in conjunction with the uh, Mass DEP, to make sure that all the contaminated soil gets removed and gets brought to a, a processing uh, center that that handles that kind of uh, contamination. So that is ongoing uh, as of right now. Um, I do have a letter uh, from this. I think um, might as well just send this around. I should probably ask you to do that earlier. Just send this around to all the other board members. Okay. You get a chance just from from CD Smith, the company's handling it. Uh, and unless you have any, anyone has any questions, that's all I have for a chair report. Okay, on to the health agent report. First, in my report, as you saw, was introducing Cami. And then um, for inspections, we had some routine food inspections, reinspections, complaints, and animal inspections. Nothing that stood out this month that required, you know, calling everybody and, you know, normal stuff. We only gave out eight flu shots, which is late in the season, but. There was a few people that still wanted flu shots, so they came in. I think they're still recommending it. You know, oh, really? Yeah. Got it. yeah, even if you didn't get it, they still want you to get it. So. Okay. Because yeah. it can go into, like, late March. And, and it really yeah. ramped up this month, too. Yeah. yeah. Like, over the next few months is when they typically ramp up. So. Yeah. More flu shots or more flu cases? More, more flu, flu cases. cases. Yeah, it's so really ramped like up. they say, like, now is still a really good time to get them. If anyone out there watching <laughs> hasn't gotten it, yeah. get it. <laughs> So last year, according to our Maven report, last year we had 93 cases of the flu in town. So far this year we have 23. Oh, that's good. So. Okay. That's the only thing that was um, of interest in the Maven report. The rest was all standard cases that were just checked up and, you know, like a hepatitis C and things like that. Okay. Does it stipulate which flu it is, or do no. you have to say okay? Because I would like to know, out of those 23 people, how many got, people got the flu shot? Oh, yeah. But yeah. I guess you can't find that out. <laughs> but I was curious on that. Yeah. She said you can't find that out. Hmm. That would be good information to have. Yeah. <coughs> so this month, was 20. we're up to 23. Okay. This month or, or so this far, season? This up to as of today, we're up to 23 cases. Okay. That's January. Yep. And last year we had 93 in total. And that's my whole report. Okay. Well, um, I think Emmy, you have this next item. Yeah, this is sort of going. <laughs> sort of hate to rehash things. <laughs> this is sort of going back to that incident where the dog had got. Oh yeah. The rodenticide. I heard I came somewhere else of a similar thing happening, and I decided to finally go to like the Home Depot website and see. You, I didn't for some reason. I was just thinking that you would buy bait boxes preloaded, but actually you can just buy like a tub of bait blocks, which I guess I wasn't 
really realizing. And on the label, it does say that they have to be contained in bait boxes, but it's like in fine print in the midst of three paragraphs. And I, um, this applies also to people's private property. It's the federal law. You have to keep them in bait boxes because an You're talking about the just, refill cartridges that come in big cases. Yeah, because yeah. people could, because animals could just like take it or carry it somewhere else. So I'm wondering if we should just make a note of that in our, both on our rodent document that's on the- Oh, right, 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 page. the one that we have it's on like the page, yeah. one line that says, like a reminder that um, road inside must be contained in a big box. What if, I'm just questioning one thing. Yeah. What if they're different things are made in different ways that they shouldn't all be in a big box? Because I know some of them come on the rod that you open it up and you put them on the rod. But my pay scale, I, I do not deal with these <laughs> things on a daily basis. Sure. Yeah. sure. I just put a note that these things are dangerous to pets and please read the label carefully and if they belong in a bait box, please make sure you put it in one. And then yeah, like a follow instruction. Read the label is yeah. the yeah. most important yeah. part of That's it. Good point. Yeah. 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 And then Thank and you, Gina. In the in the summer if we do get a resurgence, hopefully we won't, but if we do right. if we could do a social media Blitz, maybe to that effect. Just yeah, I think as a we, reminder. I think we talked about doing that at least once yeah, a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Good idea. Um, yeah, we should put that. Just because you know, kids can get into. I think people sometimes just throw it. It's on their private property. They don't really think about it. I don't think a lot of people do that, but there's probably somebody <laughs> out there who does that. You know. So maybe we can do that in like April, May, right? Mm -hmm. Good time. Is that is that too late? Actually, no. I th I don't think we really start seeing upticks in rats until well, mid summer to usually. Late summer. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's what so. I thought too. Okay. So maybe something for April, um, April and May meeting that we can have um, a block put aside, or yeah, or maybe even do something in, in, in general from a mailing standpoint, especially maybe to that targeted area uh, that was so affected. Um, I'm trying to remember when bills go out. It's always a good time to piggyback yeah. something. Bill would the be ideal. Yeah. yeah. The only one that doesn't get thrown away. August or something. Yeah. Okay. Comes before August. And what did you say about the website, Emmy? Oh, if we could just make sure that there's a sentence in our our rodent info page under our rodent info link through Board of Health. Don't we have one? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know we put something on the select board's there. web page. Oh, is it on the select board's well, <coughs> It was something that we, um, I'm pretty sure it's something we, we voted on. <laughs> I think it was right? something. Yeah, yeah, I think there's something on the board of health. I think, I think it was like a best practices kind of thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so just add in some language in regards to making sure to read the labels properly uh, yeah, for yeah. proper use of each and every Okay. Do you difference. want to maybe follow up with an email on exactly what you're yeah. suggesting? Sure, sure, sure. So that we understand what you mean. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really like the suggestion to mm -hmm. say this could be dangerous to right. and children. Right. So it's the link to road down to Okay. Perfect. Um, but you have to go down a couple layers to get there. Okay. And the <laughs> message is from you. <laughs> so, speaking of which, yep. um, that doesn't really belong under the select board. That was just yeah. I'm surprised the way it's it. there, actually. Well, because <laughs> it was it was just a very. Um, I was able to do it without. It's not you guys have health to. Services. I'm sorry. This is public health services. It's under public health services. Right, but there is a there is a um, message from the chair. Or something okay. Like that regarding rodents. That was just a, a thing that I. Through, I was able to throw up very fast. In the immediacy of what was going on. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I didn't have to wait for you guys to meet sure. or anything. And um, so if we could, if you guys like it, migrate it over to your page. If you don't like it, 
we, we should remove it. Okay. Because it's really a Board of Health purview. All right, I'll, 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 um, you don't mind. I'll take a look at that and I'll, I'll round back with you on it. Yeah, yeah it's okay. been there too long. I feel kind of... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Kevin and Andy will work out whether yeah. something will be in yep. the selectman's page or... Yeah, I think I'll just... Page. It's probably easy just to take a look at it and throw it throw it down yep. for one of the future meetings that yeah. we can discuss it, what exactly it is, and see if yeah. we want to yeah. get it all the way over to ours, but we'll at least get it right off of yours, and we'll just kind of uh, exactly. put, put the ball in our yeah. court. Exactly. Okay. Especially winter time, it doesn't need to be up. Right. So, okay. Let's do that then. Okay. So you want me to take it down? Um, who is, I'll ask, who, I'll ask uh, Bob to take it down, or whoever. He whoever, yeah, okay. whoever. Yeah, I think it, uh, because I don't think we have access to that. Um, Right. Well, we, I can follow up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah just, and just throw it into my, an email to me, the, mm -hmm. uh, the information contained in there. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be great, Jean. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, any, anything else? No. Nope. No? Okay. So am I keeping that on the agenda for next month? Um, yes, please. Put that on for next month, just a brief discussion on uh, the information contained on, um, on road control from the select board page. Best way to phrase it, I guess. Okay, that brings us to um, um, trying to tie in this discussion on regulations and tree lawns in regards to pesticide. Um, just as a quick recap for everybody who is watching or listening, um, this came up in, during the uh, report from the health agent last month in regards to we've been looking into ways that we can figure out. Um, forms of fines and um, trying to figure out easy ways that you can test. Um, the, the big problem that we seem to have run into is that it's tough to find somebody if you can't prove that they've actually done anything wrong. Uh, that led us into testing. Testing led us down a road that you would assume would be something that someone else has already invented this wheel, but uh, they haven't really invented it very well. Um, and they all, I think they also don't test for every kind of pesticide as well too, Didn't, wasn't there? Yeah, although, although I do have to actually go back and sort of correct that a little okay. bit, which is I had mentioned, I think twice now I've mentioned glyphosate. Glyphosate is actually not included in these regulations. When I looked more carefully at their at the list. toxicity class, it's very difficult to find just a list of the pesticides <laughs> in each class. Okay. But glyphosate is not on there. It's a possible carcinogen by the World Health Organization, but not by the EPA. And this regulation is specifically the EPA. Okay. So glyphosate would actually not even be included in this. Other towns are exploring adding that as a as its own independent ban, but it's that would not be part of these regulations. Okay. All right. So then everything so would be testable that are in the that would be in the regulations. So sort of mostly. Okay. But I possibly, but it's it, it's not really a feasible thing to really I think. To. to test? No, I think that's what we kind of came around to at our last meeting. Yeah, then we talked to another town, and they don't really enforce it. John, when John was here, he talked to someone. and So there hadn't been one complaint, which yeah. is mind-boggling, I think, because Marblehead adopted it somewhere in, was the 80s or, or 90s? It was yeah, a, they've, it was they've had it for a while, know, yeah. and they've actually not had one complaint. So when we said, how do you handle yeah. testing and fines, they said, we've never, yeah. we've never actually had to find anyone. Um, so my thought there is kind of what you just said. Someone usually is going to complain. Um, the fact that no fines have come out means that I don't know that there's been a whole lot of enforcement in Marblehead uh, from the sound of it, um, which I think led us all to try to put this to try to put this on for tonight so we could try to figure this out or, or, or not. Um, at, at the end of the day, uh, if I recall, a lot of um, a lot of the, the board. Um, discussion was based around can we do and if we do it what's the implementation what's that look like what's that the cost of the town the cost of the town seems like it's greater than the fine that the town would be so it's, it's a, yeah for testing so it's it's certainly difficult um, water to navigate in regards to that so I, I'll, I'll be open to any thoughts that you may have so uh, 
I was just remembering, I think Jean last time mentioned we could just post a best practices instead of implementing a policy. Mm -hmm. So I am against that. Okay. Um, so first let me, um, these pesticides are, um, the toxicity class one and two are the like extra dangerous things. They're, they're not things that homeowners are gonna be able to get. Right. <laughs> these are only restricted use pesticides. So this is, these are only things that would be used by licensed applicators, lawn care right. companies, maybe. Most likely, I think, you'd be looking at pest control specialists or you know mosquito and tick control specialists. Um, they use often, they'll say, if you call them, they'll say, we use a synthetic chemical derived from chrysanthemums, which sounds so nice, <laughs> but it's something called bifen, which is carcinogenic, it's neurotoxic, um, it's their plenty of studies showing that it um, has negative consequences if pregnant women are exposed to it for the infant, um, uh, kids under the age of six. Um, so I think these are important regulations. I think they're not my guess is that they're not going to be particularly difficult for people to comply with. It, we're not talking about a huge scope of property. Um, it's basically like don't spray bifen on the sidewalk because somebody could walk by in 20 minutes and not know. So are you recommending an individual level policy, something aimed at homeowners that they not allow this to be used on their property? Or are you recommending a business that we don't allow businesses to use that product within the town limits? Like a lawn care? It would have to be, company. it would have to, but the onus would have to be on the homeowner. Individual homeowner. Because there are businesses from all over that. So I mean, it's, gives homeowners an opportunity to actually ask what's being used on their property. I think often we have no idea what everyone's using and we usually don't ask because we just want the end result. Sure, yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, I'm still confused about how we would even know. Right, so if someone, if someone complained, you would have to ask the homeowner, ask the homeowner if they use, have been using a pest control company or a landscaper, do, do they know what product has been used, remind them of the regulations. Um, if they don't, if they know who the provider is but they don't know what they're using, you can always call the company directly and ask them what they're using. Homeowner or contact the homeowner. company and say my town requires yeah. that I send yeah. you know a list of the products you use. Yeah. Just possibilities brainstorm. I mean, because I, I sort of suspect that we won't actually get many I calls. Wouldn't, I would hope not. Um, yeah. That's my guess. Um, I think they said most of these companies don't spray that part of the lawn. I think a lot of them don't. Um, I think when we were doing this last, I don't remember who said that, but um, someone said that most of them don't even, and you notice like the little flags are usually right. on the people's on lawns. Lawn. I don't think most of them do the yeah. tree line, but who knows if it goes over a little bit, you know. Yeah, that's it. I don't remember. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so are you um, proposing anything specific that you want to, in regards to fines and, and uh, I think what we have implementation? Is, I think what we have is fine. Okay. With the way we have it, the, the way we have it structured now. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, I think it's fine. So then. We would have to add in some 
on what you're saying, we'd have to still add in some language, though. I don't know if we do, because the... In regards to how we, how we handle it once we get the call. To, I mean... How does the health department actually handle it? Other regulation in the past, have we... With the I mean, I have <laughs> <laughs> right. It could be possible to set the policy out. And then, right, but that's a detailed the you know, one, two, and investigation portion. Right. Well, yeah, like, but we, we need, 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 I need something that says what the inspectors are supposed to be doing. So, what right. is the protocol that we're supposed to be following? We need are the implementation we, part of it. Are we going by the honor system? Are we ticketing? Are we calling them relentlessly? Right. Sure. Go ahead. Regulations. As I recall, they, they don't describe the imp implementation of it. It's just a regulation. Thou shall not. Right. Whatever. Um, and, and then the, you, you guys, with the health agent, develop how you want to handle, handle um, complaints. Yep. So the regulation doesn't. So the regulation won't have the language written in it, but we can have an enforcement policy that we agree on. So this one that actually. That would be separate from the. This one actually does have complaints in here. The health agent shall investigate. Yeah, so there is something in there. Does it have anything specific? I mean, uh, complaints received about any practices or acts that may violate the provisions of this. If the health agent finds an investigation is not required because they have alleged act of practice is not in violation, the health agent shall notify the complaint of such findings, reasons upon which is based. The health agent shall provide a report to the Board of Health of all complaints and findings. If the health agent finds that an investigation is warranted, the health agent shall investigate. If the health agent finds there has been a violation of these regulations, then the health agent and or the Board of Health shall be authorized to take action and institute such proceedings as are provided by law. So question in regards to that, what exactly is provided by law? Is that just the, in regards to your authority to um, write tickets, fines? Is that is that, that preferences? And what is Kevin, one thing to sure. check is our, our animal regulations. A lot of the regulations are mandated by the state, like the food code and so forth. Right. But I do know that um, our regulations for, um, I think we have regulations for tobacco products, and we have regulations for uh, and, and keeping of animals. Mm -hmm. And um, so if could follow that format of, I don't know whether they, I don't remember them um, describing how, how you're going to enforce, but I, I could be wrong. And, and that's, that's a, those two documents are precedent setting. I know now we don't have um, any, that I know of anyone inspecting for tobacco, compliance with their tobacco regulations. Um, because, or do we? We, yeah, we, do. we decided to pick that up. No. Yeah, you decided. Yeah, 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 we yeah. picked that ball okay. up. With, yeah. Okay, great. Um, but you didn't have to. Right. It is my point. Right. And so it's a regulation that you may right. or may right. not be yep. um, enforcing. Okay. As strange as that sounds. As strange as that sounds, right. And that sounds like what Marblehead most likely is doing. Mm -hmm. Or if they haven't gotten any complaints. Or if, if they haven't, I'd, yeah. I'd be amazed yeah. by that, but yeah. Yeah. but that would be, I mean, actually, I never asked them that question. But those two regulations, and this is a, reg, this would be a, this in this current form is a regulation, yeah. as I recall. Correct. Um, the, that, those would be good things to refer to. Um, you might even be able to pull them up now. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Animal keeping, yeah. so this says complaints upon receipt. Of a written complaint, the board or its agent shall investigate the matter and provide oh, okay. a written response to the complainant and licensee if it is determined that a hearing should be held. Such hearing will be conducted as noted. Yeah, but we inspect for tobacco and we inspect for animals. So are we inspecting right. for tree lawns? And I, I would like to think that there are no complaints. But I have two separate tracking spreadsheets, just tracking complaints on two separate, entirely separate matters. And I'm spending a fairly significant amount of my time tracking complaints. And how do we as track As assistant it? town manager. 
So if we're going to adopt this, I think we have to think about how we're going to well, manage it. In a complaint. Or yeah. who uh, would be handling the complaint? Well, I, I guess, in my opinion, I've worked in several communities, and um, I'm, I'm always surprised by the number of complaints that I see here in Reading. People are hot, you know, very tuned in to what they don't like. <clears throat> and I spend a lot of my time, as does Laura, dealing with complaints on a whole wide range of things. So if we're gonna, I think we should, I would just like it, the record to show that, you know, if this is what the board wants to do, I would anticipate complaints. Okay, so we would just have a written policy of how to handle complaints. I think, I think it's something you have to think about. Mm -hmm. But in tobacco, as well as in animals that you mentioned, we check them and we inspect them regularly anyways. So will we be checking no, this? No, no, no. And will it say somewhere that we don't check it regularly, it's <clears throat> only on a complaint basis? I think we don't have anything else in the regulation other than complaints, right? Um, I don't think, trying it to scan it all right I don't now. think that it stipulates anything other than complaints. So this is only going to be complaint driven? Mm -hmm. I think if you, as long as you say that, you know, it's clear. Um, that'd be a I mean, there's nothing in here that says anything other than. But does it say only complaint driven? No, but it doesn't say anything else. Does it say complaint? Yeah, the only thing it's. There's a section on. There's a section on complaints, but it, it only says that the Department of Health Aid shall investigate complaints received. So it doesn't say, go on to say the Department of Health Aid and shall. Um, determine if it would, it would have to have language in here that says the Department of Health agent um, shall um, on a yearly basis determine if pesticides are being used, which it doesn't say anywhere in this document, so it only does refer to complaints. I must have the old one though, because I think we took the $50 fine. We bumped the fines down one, one level. Yeah, that's. Or maybe we didn't vote on it. Maybe we just talked about we it. We talked right? about it. Yeah. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we. I don't think we voted on it. Yeah. Of no. so pushing down the first offense to be a letter, mm -hmm. and then fifty and hundred on subsequent offenses. Yeah. I'm just trying to think through. Are there any ways to minimize the workload of not the people would file a superfluous complaint, but to make sure that if you're investigating a complaint, it's likely that there's something to be found there. And how reasonable would it be for the person who files the complaint to either say, you know, I see, I saw the truck outside my neighbor's house and I see on that company's website that they do use biofin, biofin, biofin or whatever, yeah. Um, and I believe that that's what they were using. So if there's some, you know, like oh, standard evidence, evidence or something that yeah. the person is aware that they, well, they, they just saw somebody. Well, I think no matter what we do, if we enact this, we're we're going to put more workload on um, on our health agent to to follow up on these complaints if we get them. Mm -hmm. So I think you know that's where making the first offense that of a um, of a notification. Yeah. Uh, made a lot of sense to me. Just you know, I, I don't know that Laura, you need to do anything else other than send it out. Now I know that right. gives a lot That's of a lot yeah. of authority and power to somebody to complain and get a letter sent to their neighbor's house. Um, but I I don't know that the fir uh, first offense. Uh, I don't foresee you going out there and trying to determine if it actually is. It's just right. the way we were talking about it was sending them our regulation, this, mm -hmm. and advising them that, that that a complaint was lodged. And just so you know. These, you know, it, we're not saying you use these applications, but so you know, these these types of applications are no longer acceptable on tree lawns. And, you know, we can have, we can, I think, direct you from a board standpoint to how to best implement this policy. Uh, I think you're right. I think the two of them probably don't have to go hand in hand. I don't know if it has to be written in here so much as the board can vote to say, okay, we now have a new policy. Here's how we want to see it implemented, and, and we can put that on. Um, put that on a document and have that as a public record uh, for you to fall back on and use. Okay. Would we want to have, so it sounds like we would want to have on the website posted somewhere the regulation that, you know, these are in really easy to read lists of you can use these pesticides and then also have the, you know, full regulation. I guess I'm saying 
to be sure that this information is clearly available and in easy to understand format. Yeah. Maybe that includes like sending out mailings or something like that, but at least on the website. Yeah, and we should also have acceptable use um, ones as well. Alternative uses for people that, you know, mm -hmm. to I be mean, able to I, use. I think actually, since it's not going to be things that the homeowners are using, it's more just make sure that they, because the, the, the license applicator is going to know what class pesticide they're using. Sure. So there can just be a conversation that's just what class, you know, just what so you know, we can't that. use class one and class two, what are you using? Is it a class one or a class two? You know, the homeowner doesn't even have to know the whole list right. of what, you know, all the right. crazy chemical names. Right. Oh, on the tree line you're talking about. On the tree line. Right, okay. Right. Just yeah. wanted to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically, <laughs> specifically, so, so to sound for like the, you, yeah. Right, specifically for the regulations, yeah. because, um, yeah, I think if we have just a list that's gonna be gobbledygook yeah. to most people. Yep. I really, yeah, I appreciate thinking about wording it as class one and class two because if the individual contents of those lists change, then yeah. you have to rewrite the policy. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I like that one. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the li like I said, the license applicators will know what they're using. So. I mean, would it be good to write something about, like, that's a roundup deck, like, uh, right. As like a separate. Yeah, just as a FY. Because it was supposed to be removed, but when Obama was in, right, and it got there were a lot, yeah, yeah, there were. Yeah, Europe doesn't, they don't use it that much anymore. It's like it's Roundup, whatever's in yeah. Roundup or something. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy about a number of yeah. pesticides in the pipeline, actually. The EPA actually only reviews pesticides, I think, every 15 years. Um, and then companies just have a tendency to make new ones <laughs> that are it was somewhat similar. Removed, but then the Trump image, somehow they stopped it. Yeah, I think it was also. Be yeah, yeah, I mm -hmm. think some of that was also. So the, the Obama administration had decided to start including human data in their health assessments. Um, and it's sort of crazy, but they hadn't done that ever before. Um, and so that was written into uh, how they were going to do things in December of 2016. Um, uh, and then with the new administration, they were not very happy about the inclusion of human data. Human data is not super clean, but um, it's pretty relevant. It's relevant. <laughs> it is <policy>. relevant. <laughs> so, it's just something to think of because I got it. Is. I, don't I know that. a lot. I, I know. Yeah, yeah. and I know a lot of other towns do seem to be having this conversation. Um, what I would actually like to see is, I think it would be great if we could. This is sort of going off on a little bit of a tangent, but if we could establish um, a pesticide use reduction task force in Reading, that's, you know, you get some people from the garden club or from, you know, and they can start an educational outreach sort of campaign such that we don't necessarily have to do all of that. Um, but I think something like that could be beneficial. Okay, so that leaves us to one modify yep. <clears throat> section eight, paragraph B, yep. which is the violations and penalties part. <laughs> okay. And I thought we had, yeah, I wish I Back saved here. it. Probably have it somewhere. Okay. I thought we already had some wording that we all kind of liked in regards to that. So we, we'll have to amend this quickly and fly. Shall be subject, uh, shall be. Specifies provisions, best management regulations shall. Yeah, shall be issued a written warning. Shall be issued the pesticide regulation. I yeah. think that was what um, we wanted yeah. to go with, right? And informed of, um, of subsequent fines for repeat offense. Maybe that's the best line so they know that there will be fines coming after, right. after this initial warning. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, I wish I brought, I brought my one that's changeable too. Just not I didn't bring anything. Dollar amount. No, I think we still have to include a dollar amount for the subsequent fine. For second and third, second yeah. And so third. and then yeah. so for second yeah. offense would be a fifty dollar fine yeah. and hundred dollar fine okay. for um, third and subsequent offenses. So it would be okay, Shelby. A copy. These regulations. Okay. <coughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one. <laughs> To the language and then subject to a fine of $50 for the first offense and 100 for second. Yeah, yeah. I think correct. Right. So we just insert that. So, again, what you're doing now is modifying the, the fine. text yeah. of the draft bylaw yes. that will have to be adopted by the select board. Yes. Correct. Okay. This board has no regulatory authority over the right. Correct. Right. 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 So we're leaving the ticketing? We're what, by leaving, do you mean not pursuing? Or so so we're, leave, we're leaving purchase? the language in there that for yeah. the second offense it'll be a $50 fine and $100 for third and subsequent offenses. So that'll be left in there. Um, and then in regards to implementation, what we then need to do, um, Laura, is uh, come up with how the board wants to handle you implementing and enforcing that policy in regards to those two. The first one's pretty pretty easy. Yeah. It's a complaint. It's a it's a mailing, um, and then hopefully that's a res you know resolves any kind of issue that may may or may not have been there, but just resolves any issue moving forward that doesn't jump to that point. But what we need to do as a board is come up with how we want you to handle if it does come up. Now there's a second offense at this house. So and let me just make sure I understand this because I'm starting to get a little confused. So Laura would, somebody complains about their neighbor, which happens all the time in Reading. Mm -hmm. Laura would get the complaint, and she would send out a letter to the person that has the violation and say, you are in violation of these regulations, and include the regulations. But we have no way of knowing if that's true or not. No, no, so, um, that's good. So that's, that's not exactly how I'd like to see it handled. Um, I prefer that the first offense is a, and, and offense is the wrong term, <clears throat> a complaint that is, that is um, brought to you or it would be something from an educational standpoint so moving forward, right? So we're not saying you have, somebody told us um, there was a complaint made to the, to the Board of Health. Um, we're letting you know that there was a complaint made. We're providing you with our new regulations. Um, if there was a violation, just so you know, moving forward, there are fines and penalties for continuing to violate that, the, this new policy. So, so it's not labeling somebody. Why don't we move that to the complaint section? And here. Paragraph B? Uh, yeah, and just say. Uh, we can even actually put it maybe. We put the uh, issuing the copy of the regulation in the complaint section somewhere. You know what I mean? Now, when you when you say complaints, are these going to be written complaints that people have to physically sign, sign and bring in, or are they going to be just random anonymous complaints? We get a lot of anonymous complaints that, that we don't. No, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So, like, can I just call and go? I don't want to tell you who I am, but I know Heidi's putting stuff on his lawn. Want to lawn? Gotta go. And then, like, Heidi gets a letter, and then I call back again. Still don't like Heidi, so I'm like, hey, let me send this, make this call, and now I'm sending Heidi tickets because I have no way to prove if Heidi is putting chemicals on or not. It's just based on if Heidi tells me she is or no, she's no, not. No, I don't see the ticket going that way. The ticket part is, the ticket part you would actually have to know either because the homeowner tells you they're using it or because the licensed applicator tells you they're using it. 
So if everybody says they're not? If everybody says they're not, you can't take it. And could we offer, ask for some type of evidence? Like, great, just have the company who provided your lawn care send us a you know, letter stating and if they, don't they want do to? not use class one and class two. If and if they don't want to? If the lawn care company If the want homeowner to. doesn't want to, if they say, no, I'm not giving you that information. Well, how, how do we enforce any regulation that we usually are doing, we have something in the regulations that says you can't do X. Mm -hmm. Then we go to that and we verify and we enforce when we do regulatory work. This is a little more okay. challenging. Because? Because if like, we I don't have to, any facts. If I go to a restaurant and they don't have hot water, I can tell they don't have hot water because I test it. Uh -huh. So you either have hot water or you don't. But the company either uses the chemical on that lawn or they don't. What if they don't want to tell you? Well, I, How do I, make they, them? I, mean, I think you're help? trying to get around. I see at the point that you can collect your own evidence about whether or not the water is hot <laughs> by taking the temperature of it. Um, but you can't necessarily collect it. Like if I said on December 12th, this water was the wrong temperature, you can't collect that own evidence. I mean, yourself, you would have to rely on some type of you know, records that maybe the the food establishment said, oh, well, we took the temperature before we delivered the no, because you know, food, esta food establishments are at the time of the at the time that you go in. It's a snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. So if I go to your house and you say, no, I don't want to give you that information, then what do I do? I guess I'm trying to come up with a way where it would be the onus would be on the homeowner to provide evidence that they of just what they used, and it seems like a company would be able to say. You know, we checked our records and we see that on the state we used this mix of, you know, chemicals on your lawn. What if you did it yourself? Well, but then it wouldn't be would under the regulations because, because they can't obtain have, those. They chemicals. can't obtain those. So you what if they don't want to tell you who they used? Well, then they're in violation of the policy. Yeah. Right. Reg. Regulation. Yeah. Okay. Big difference. Right. Does it say in the regulations that if the health agent re requests information that the homeowner is required to comply? Do we say that in there? We can't. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you can make a homeowner comply. I think that's the point that Laura's getting to. So as long as everybody says no. Nope. And you can't send, like, send a letter saying these are the new regulations, make sure you give your company... You know, this, I mean, I, know, like, I will say that this may happen, but my it happens a lot in 10 years, let me tell you. <laughs> I've seen it a lot. A lot of people go, hey, but a lot out by of the way, <laughs> I'm out of code on this. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. A lot out of 24,000 people each year is probably not actually, you know, it's like some very small percentage of the population, and the vast majority of the population are just going to actually comply. <laughs> um, sure. I would imagine the, oh, sorry. No, go like right ahead. Yeah. So I, I would imagine the, the people who are licensed to apply these things have to keep a record of how much they've used yeah. and where. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know for sure. Do, do, yeah, so um, they should be able to provide you with that information if they say, um, you know, bugger off, then um, I, that might not be the best business decision for them. Um, I can't ban people from using them. I'm sorry? I can't ban people from using no, them. No, this isn't banning people from u using them. The, 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 the um, licensed uh, person who's going out and applying them. Um, it, it's just the Board of Health is asking them for a record of what they applied at this property on such and such a date, and it, they don't want to be in trouble with, um, they don't want to be outside regulations in, in general, it's, it's um, I would imagine. So, so they may comply and then they pay the $25 fine, or if it's the first offense, they get a letter, you know, a letter reminding the, the residents get a letter reminding them. But, but that information is available, um, whether or not it's public information or you 
can force them to give it to you. I, d I don't know. But um, if they choose not to give it to you, um, then they'll be on your report at the Board of Health meeting. I asked such and such a company for these records and they refused to give it to me. I don't think many companies are gonna want to be in that position. I, I, I don't know, but there may be times when you, you can't enforce. So, so we might want to make sure that they're not anonymous complaints, though. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple good points brought up in, in regards to that. It's a tough thing to... Like in other towns, you can't make anonymous yeah. complaints. Well, I, if you want to complain about a specific restaurant or a mm -hmm. place or a thing, you have to come in personally with a letter signed by you saying, this is who I am, this so is what I'm complaining about. Yeah. As soon as they give you that letter, though, that becomes public record? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if you, the homeowner, wants to see who complained about it, right. you can come in and say, oh, look, that's Mark Lassen where complained about my lawn. That's kind of where I'm driving with that one, right? Yeah. But isn't that what this is, complaint-based? Yeah. But it's tough to... Hmm. It's tough to put someone in that position in order to just lodge a complaint. What if it's a legit complaint? Right. And then if the onus is on staff to go research with the lawn company on whether or not this actually was a violation? Right. I mean, I think it needs to be on the person who's being complained about. Well, the only way you do that is you know, on, oh, on, the, on the findable offense, then it has to be, you need to provide us evidence that it's not. Mm -hmm. And if you do, you're fine. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then we're going to find you anyway. And it's the only way you could really get someone to do it. Just put the complete onus on them. You're going to get fined if you don't provide us the information. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you get somebody to actually give you the information right. without having some kind of penalty for not doing so. Mm -hmm. I, I and that gets complicated as well. Yeah, we yeah. check with town council on that. Um, to find somebody without really knowing if they violated the regulation mm -hmm. um, may, be, may be problematic. Um, Which is where we started with this right. conversation. Right. It's right. like a right. circle down there. Yeah. But I think just you're going to have to accept times that, yeah. that there are times when you're not going to be able to do anything. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and, 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 and I, I can't speak for the rest of the board, but there would be a discussion about do, how much of the health agent's time do we want to spend, uh, have her, uh, um, you know, she a lot of certain amount, cer certain amount of time. You know, send a letter to the pest control agency, or not the pest, the pest applicator, and just asking them, and um, the resident asking them and reminding them of the policy, and then then wait and see what you get. I'm not worried about the time. I'm worried about how do you know it's a real complaint? How do you know it's just a neighbor that doesn't like a neighbor? How do you know it's not just somebody complaining? Shouldn't they have to put their information on it? How do we track it? How do we make the homeowner tell the truth? Mm -hmm. Well, that's true for. Uh, Animal complaints, you know, a uh, complaint could be, or noise complaints, or right. um, all yep. sorts of complaints. They could be specious. They 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 they, they may be true. You, you don't you don't know, but um, you just follow them up and uh, with, with a letter. You know, I, how do you guys want to follow them up? Um, and you get what you get. I think the um, just by saying. This isn't allowed in writing to do this. It will carry some, some weight. I think so, too, and I think it gets to the main reason that we would want to implement the policy, which is really to dissuade licensed contractors from using these chemicals within our town limits. Yeah. Okay. It's not. Well, on the tree lawn. On the tree lawn, right. <laughs> on the tree lawn. <laughs> I, get, I get heart palpitations right. when you say <laughs> on the town property. On the tree lawn. Um, and so even without defining how we would implement with individual homeowners, we might already move closer to our purpose of reducing the amount of chemical use exactly. in this town just by making it right. known to That's people who are licensed to dispense it that they are not allowed to dispense it here. So they may actually start volunteering that information to the homeowner, like, these are the things we're allowed to use, and that right. in and of it itself gives them an gives excuse the to say, I can only, I can, I can apply only this up here. Yeah. Uh, you could also, you know, Kevin, um, 
I don't know if you've considered, but you can also give the board options. You can say we've considered this, we've considered this, and we've considered that, and the, the board can then take it up. Um, I, I don't know if that, if that makes it a little easier for you. Um, yeah, so this is, a, this is an interesting one, too, and I'm just thinking in regards to it, because the select board, obviously, everyone knows, does have to give authority for us to uh, put this into place, but it still leaves us the authority to regulate it. Is that correct? Isn't that nice? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an odd thing to have happen, quite frankly, and that's why you almost do have to have two pieces to this. Yeah. You really have to have the regulation, mm -hmm. Yeah. and that's going to obviously be driven from the select board's authority. Well, we would follow your lead. Right, but, but yeah. from a, just from a legal standpoint, right? Yeah. So that's, that's going to come from the select board's authority, and then our authority would be how we want it implemented at that point. So forgive me for not knowing, but you raised the great example of noise complaints. So yeah. we don't do noise. Oh, we don't do noise complaints. So are there any complaints that we follow up on where we can't actually get that in-person information? We just we can't. Right, so you're saying we receive a noise complaint, but we don't follow up on that. Is that health department doesn't? Correct. Police department. Does, Police correct? Do. We Police don't department. have a noise ordinance. We have a construction bylaw, so we might get a complaint about noise during the construction outside of the allowed construction hours. Okay. That's probably what Andy was thinking about. But we do tonight. have with like animal. I, I think I mentioned this at the last meeting with animal waste. Right, people are supposed to pick up after their dogs when they're out mm -hmm. and you know it's not like you know whose dog right so are there was. complaints filed in that case i guess i'm trying to come up with yeah, another example where in our town a complaint gets filed and it's impossible for the health agent to collect first-hand data on it but we rely on something else do you see what i'm saying is there any analogous situation the, the dog waste thing um, because uh, I was on the, I was the liaison to the forest and trails. They, they don't, um, it, they use it as um, dissuasion. D dissuasion. Um, and, and they just keep reminding people and they find different ways to say this is against our regulations. The Board of Cemetery Trustees does yeah. a similar thing, don't they? Uh, the uh, Board of Trustees. I think they do have something similar in regards to how they how they do that yeah. with, with the, the keeping of the cemeteries as well. Right. And the noise complaints, like if you, we do have noise complaints, uh, the, you know, if, if, if there's a late night party at your neighbor's house, um, you call the police and say, it's disturbing, it's, the, peace. It's disturbing the peace, it's too, too loud. Well. And then they show up and everyone's quiet. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they handle that as best they can. Usually they go in and say, uh, we got to keep it down with getting complaints. Mm -hmm. And that could disconcert in a similar way. Right. It, yeah. It yeah. sounds yeah. like yeah. it could proceed in a similar way, with the exception of the police specifically. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't anticipate sending the police to yeah. me a, yeah. a letter. When the police show up, it's a very different thing than when right. are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or emails. <laughs> and then I think like education, telling them we're doing this and it's going to be up to you to keep, you know, the tree lot or free of pesticides and check with your company and make sure you inform them and I don't know, then there's what, Earth Day, is that in the spring, maybe to do something, I don't know. Seems like people could be responsible for themselves. I don't know how you'd implement the thing. It's like yeah. texting and driving. Yeah. Yeah. How many times do you drive by? Now they got them on the walk on the dashboard. Yeah. They know, so. There are a lot of community partners. I know we've talked about that. Um, Town Forest, Trails Committee, Conservation, Garden Club, um, the Scouts, I mean, on and on and on of, of potential community partners to help spread the word. Mm -hmm. Climate advisor. Climate advisor, yeah. So, Laura, to what you were talking about early in regards to having people um, put their name to the complaint, it almost kind of does specify something to that word. It says if, the, if um, essentially, if it's found that there's not a violation of these regulations, health agents shall notify the complainant of such findings. So, 
you know, anyway. again, that's where it gets right. back to, to me, I'm, it, from an implementation standpoint, we need to give clear direction if we're going to um, adopt this regulation or, or ask the select board to adopt this regulation on how we want Laura to follow it up. If they're not willing to give their name, that to me would not be a complaint under this. You can't, you can't notify them that there is no issue. Mm -hmm. How do we do it for complaints about animals? Oh, that's a good question. How do we do it for complaints about animals? We transfer them to animal control officer. No, I, I mean the animals that are the things that fall under our animal. We inspect them every year. No. Does anybody have a complaint though? Say that that person's really got ten chickens yeah. over there. You know? Yeah. Do you get that complaint? Oh, yeah. All right. How do? We, what typically do you ask of that person who's complaining? We go, but we have, we inspect them regularly, anyways. Right. So we know when we go during that time frame. If the state agriculture department gives us the book, mm -hmm. then we have to go check them, and then we match that up with how many it has on their permit and how many they had during the time of their inspection. But can, any, can anybody just call up and say, hey, my neighbor or in this this house has 10 chickens, and yep. I know you're only supposed to have six? Mm -hmm. Yep. And so do they have to give their name? No. You just take that and you have to run with it? Yep. So okay. we go physically and inspect it. Okay. But obviously we count the chickens. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I know that's a weird complaint to get that it's not, you know, a false complaint <laughs> uh, to get for sure. I hope that's a big one, having a false complaint. And, and a I think that's the point we're trying to get back to, because you, you don't, you don't want just you people... you just don't like somebody right, and you're right. like saying, I'm going to get them in trouble, like, right. and, you know. But right. in a lot of towns, yeah. you have to sign yeah. your name. You should sign. Yeah. Right. yeah. Maybe they're concerned, they thought they saw them spray it on there, they're not yep. sure, and, you know, just... But it's doable under the animal regulations. You don't have to give your name. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so we have that precedent. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, they're they're kind of two different things, though, right? So there's not that many people that keep animals as opposed to how many people actually have um, lawns. Have long well, have, have <laughs> companies come out and spray their lawns, right? Yeah. For for True. one thing or another. True. But, I, but you, were, I'm sorry, I was just pointing that out in relation to your quandary about. Do we uh, make them give their name, or do we not make them give their name um, when they make the complaint? So I, I read this as if they don't give them the, don't give their name, there's no complaint. So, um, per if you look at, I'm just wondering what the animal regulations say. Right. And you, if they say you don't have to give their but name, that's um, you could mimic just mimic that. I, uh, I, you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. It says a written complaint. A written complaint on the animals. animal. Keeping of animals, it says, on receipt of a written complaint. All right, complaint. Bill, oh. there you have it. A written complaint only. So we can say that. So shall investigate. Written on, on Once received a written complaint. Okay. Section A. Section A. Excuse it's me, um, Section 7, paragraph seven, A. Section 7, paragraph A. And just write, and just add it written. Shall investigate upon written complaints received. Yeah. So mm -hmm. kind of tie in there upon written after investigate. Yeah. changes do we need to do during the course of the meeting and how much are we allowed to do like sitting there at the computer thinking through reading carefully do you know what I mean we have to do everything at the meeting we need right? to do it at the meeting okay yeah it's going to get decided that night one yeah. way or the other okay 
Um, okay, so we have two modifications currently on this, right? I think we still haven't answered every concern, though. Did, did we want to move the issuing a copy of the regulation, this regulation, to the complaints portion instead of the violations portion? Are we making that just as a... Um, yeah, because I guess it's, not, a really, result of any it's not really a penalty when you're just being provided. Right, right. Um, so we, we put in section D of, uh, excuse me, I keep saying section. Section 7, add in a paragraph D. And we could put, lang put language in there about, um, just had I think maybe complaint. first shift upon the first complaint. And put it between A and B. I think. I don't know because is this section essentially describing what happens when a complaint is filed? Yeah. And then the next section is trying to say well, we're violation evidence penalty. of violation. Yeah. So do we want to just add if evidence of a violation is found, then we do steps one, two, and three, and that leaves a, leaves a little wiggle room for us to determine how to know that a violation has been has occurred. Well, I, I'd really, i really like to see a first, um, a, a first written complaint be simply um, a mailing to the, to the to that household that says this is our new policy. We did receive a written complaint, just so you're aware uh, of it. Uh, there's no further action at this time, but these the you know, this is um, this is what's a, a not allowed in the town of Reading uh, moving forward. Um, and they could have some kind of language that's in there as well too that specifies um, also to be aware. Um, uh, second, third, and, and any subsequent offenses are findable offenses. Mm -hmm. So it's not we're saying you've done something wrong. Right. We, we can't prove that. Uh, we're just saying we, uh, we have a complaint. <laughs> this is what we do as a town. We hand you our regulation so you're aware of it. And hopefully that resolves the issue so you don't get to mm -hmm. um, any fines. So it, also mean, it also doesn't tax Laura a lot because it's simply there. sending a letter or a packet, if right. you will, to um, right. to that household. I feel like then it does belong in the complaint section, the first part. The yeah, part it kind of does, right? Because it's not a violation or penalty. Right. Because we have this, if a health agent finds an investigation is warranted, I don't know if we want to change that to if the health agent finds that a, you know, if a health agent receives a complaint, then the health agent investigates, or do we want to change that to then the health agent notifies the complaint, not the complainee, the complaint. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is that word? <laughs> Accused. We don't have that. <laughs> I know we don't have that word in here at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, what is that? There's the complainer, complainant, the complainant, complainant, complainant. Complainant. Okay. That's the word that yeah. they've used. Complainant. The one that's the person who being does the complaining. Oh, oh, right. The complainant is the one who does the complaint. Right. And the other person is the violator. The, vi the violator. No. Accused or the violator. No, because we don't, we don't know the, the violator. Yeah. Right. What's the well, they, person who receives the complaint? They're, the complainer is saying this person is violating. Well, is it all? I guess it would always Whether be Whether it's true or not. Property owner. The property owner? I think you just call them the property owner. Yeah. yeah. Property owner is in violation yeah. of the regulation. Yeah. We can't, we can't right. say that. That covers all. Right. Yeah. Well, the complainant can. No, say absolutely. Oh, sure. Violated, sure. Right? Absolutely. But the town, right, they can the say, town has to say whatever they want to rip what the to do with sure. that. Oh, yes. We just don't at that point call them in violation yeah. until we, unless and until we obtain evidence. Pending? Um, Violator pending verification? Oh, we're not even going to sometimes oh, be able to verify. verify. So the, I think, um, sorry. I think we should put it in between A and B because basically we're saying that Laura's not going to investigate a first complaint. Right. So if we okay. put it in between yep. A and B, like... Yeah, just move them down. Yep. And a first... Com uh, we can even make the same language. So A, is the Department of Health Agent investigates complaints, blah, blah, blah. The Department of Health Agent... Issue, issues issues the, a copy, copy of the regulation to the 
property. Can't get around the cues. We just home owner. We just said property owner. Yeah, property owner. Yeah, okay. property owner. That keeps it. Yeah, property owner. <clears throat> so, seven. Right, so, someone want to type that up or write that up? Yeah. Seven. The. It would be great to get. The this in writing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> have to take the lead. Right. Right. That's like a total disaster right now. Yeah. In the meeting. It's like town meeting floor right now. <laughs> this is what we do. Modify on the fly. <laughs> department. So is there one person that's going to take the document and mark it up? Or? Emmy? I'm sure. sure. Oh. <laughs> um, is that a PDF or? It is. It is. Okay. So. It, yeah. Okay. It's You're obviously easier if it's a Word document. Yeah. I don't know. If we Does have anyone have it? Uh, sometimes you can download Save As Word and a lot. Yeah. Of okay. So if not, just, just print it out and, and mark it up and, and scan and send it back. Okay. <laughs> Keep so it find the way. <laughs> Here's a silly procedure question. Um, a previous board has already voted to put this before the select board. Oh. So we don't need to do that. I would assume we need to take a vote on the amendments. Yes. Okay. However. Yes. And then the question so I would raise is, does this also need to be reviewed once more by town council? prior to the select board getting it. It should be. I mean, it doesn't that's a good practice in general. That's why the track changes would be good. Yeah. Because town council's already reviewed it. So, yeah, so if we had this in word format that there we could redline changes, board. yeah, there's got to be one line around somewhere, right? Yeah. Or, or I'll recreate one. Yeah, in, in order to make a PDF, yeah, it I, came I, from Roy. Yeah, 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 right. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, you can cut and paste and and recreate a new one anyways, if we needed to yeah. make it simple. Yeah. I don't think we generated this. No, it, was two years. it was before I started, this was already gone, so maybe Nancy or Costa. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, I mean, you say you're gonna run with the changes? Did you, did I see your hand? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So maybe just to cut and paste it all, put it in a, okay. in a Word format of some kind or a Google Doc or something that you can show the changes? Yeah. So we have the addition of a so, uh, another card that will be the DHA. I'm sorry, the Department of Health yeah. DHA <laughs> shall issue a copy of this regulation to the to the property owner. To the property, right? <laughs> and then we have the second. There's two amendments, is that true? So there's that one, and then that the next one. one. And then oh, and then also reword. here we're going to reword this and add upon written right, right, compliance. Okay. Right. Specify that. And then in section 8B, um, we got to move those up. We have to. To a second offense and third offense. Yeah. So uh, cross out uh, $50. Well, so how do we want to change that? Um, how about? Well, I guess an oh. offense is actually a post investigation, right? So you don't have to really change that. So the first action of a complaint is, is we're giving them policy. And then this actually and says anyone who violates say, any provision, because we're not trying oh. to figure out if they violated the provisions at that point. Mm -hmm. So this could actually just stay just the way it is and 50 for first and 100 for second and subsequent. Because a violation would mm -hmm. come if the health agent finds an investigation warranted, the health agent shall investigate, the and the health agent finds that there's been a violation of these regulations. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. they don't have to change that's it good. Okay, so there's no investigation. Yeah, so we're just, we're. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, what happens if they, if they, for a second. it can't be verified and it's a second time? Or, you know, yeah, after the first. Day after day the initial, right. It's number two, but number there's, two, no, but there's evidence. no verification. You can't do anything. Yeah. I'll just read it again. <clears throat> Town Council has made it clearer to us on many occasions that sometimes um, the law says thou shall, but um, there are no consequences for not uh, obeying the law. Mm, hence the word they use shall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, saying you have to do it, mm. but it doesn't give you, it doesn't penalize you in any way. Not all. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't read this as, as anything. I mean, it just says the health agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, the health department <laughs> agent finds that an investigation is not required. Tell them I can't verify anything. Right, if the health agent stops, finds huh? that there has been a violation, uh, so you either will or may be able to find out. Mm. That there's yeah. been a violation. Yeah. For nine years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? We get uh, another location. Yeah, another complaint situation that's been going on for nine years. And I've got 45 emails about co this complaint. We literally go there every day. Every day. And it's not just health. It's health, building, conservation, planning. It's five divisions. I take a picture every day. Are we able to put a cap on, like? If no, she'll, she'll be before the select board at the next meeting. No, I, oh, I mean, I for think, sorry. You, yeah, but this is to guard against that potential so, problem. So this doesn't yeah, have the same. You repeat, maybe. Okay, yeah, I'll repeat that. Repeat. Too. No, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. You said something about if you can't find a violation, it, it, you know, if she finds a violation or if the health agent right. finds a violation, but if they don't find a violation, then that's that's all they can that's all they can do and right. you would have to keep right it's currently written you know. that um, if the health agent finds that there has been a violation of these regulations then the health agent will take such action and so if the health agent then is unable to find a violation then the health agent takes no further action so I guess there's the assumption that the health agent tries so the only way that I can find a violation is either if the homeowner says yes I violated it or they say, hey, I used XYZ for a company, call them and ask them, and then that company wants to provide me the information and say that they violated it, then I can go back and ticket the homeowner, right? Um, yeah. Somewhat. I mean, I think that... Well, I think the investigation is, is subject to your, um, your determination, quite frankly. Right, I mean, you can figure out the best and easiest way, this way to do that, but I do think that if the message that the homeowner receives is that we have a policy in the town that your licensed um, dispenser of pesticides cannot use on that tree lawn. Basically, so what if we just added in on? If they believe that they need to tell you what was used, then in some cases maybe they won't. But it seems like in many cases, because they don't want to be in violation of the prop, the policy the regulation. <laughs> They would. Sorry. Well, I was just saying, you could just add in language on, right now under um, Section 7, Paragraph C at the end here. Uh, the agent finds there's been a violation of these regulations. The health agent of Board of Health shall be authorized. Uh, no, which, which one was that? Sorry, I lost my thought here. Excuse me. If the health agent finds an investigation warranted, the health agent shall, comma, to the best of their ability, comma, investigate. So it's, it's not putting it on. You know, I'm trying to make the term to be loosely that they'll do the best of their ability to figure out and investigate. Like Andy said, you may just not find, be able to come up with any evidence whatsoever. So to the best of their ability added in there would speak to that. It doesn't sound to me like this board, correct me if I'm wrong, is expecting you to, or would want you to, um, Become a super sleuth in, in pesticide applications, um, or and spend a lot of time on it. And I don't think I mean I can't speak for the select board, but I mean, we can talk to them. But I doubt that they would want you spending a lot of your time doing that either. Just you know you give it a shot, um, you investigate to the extent you can, and um, and, and then if you can't find anything, you can't find it. I, I didn't want to speak for the board, but it said that sounded like. I think you got the general idea, sure. <laughs> the last thing we want to do is tax you yeah. on your time. You have plenty of other things you need to be focused on. Yes. But I understand the concern, too, that yeah. you don't want to put a policy in place that's unenforceable, even in principle. And so, hopefully, through this discussion, we've at least started to try to address how could this be enforced, and you acknowledge some good cases where we wouldn't be able to enforce it in those cases. Um, so I don't know if that influences anything that we want to do in terms of writing the regulation or any sort of like 
internal procedures that we come up with for dealing with complaints. Um, but I do want to make sure that, as you've said, that if it's going to, if you guys would be the ones implementing this, then you have a say and <laughs> let's figure out a way that's practical and that works. What does it say about the fine? Does it say? Um, it says if you're found in violation. Because I was just wondering, like, could you write, like, a maybe, do, is that what it's oh, right? Maybe, maybe subjected, subjected to a fine. To a fine. Like, if you put maybe subjected to a fine. I don't know. Remain shallow, two fun words. Something like that. I don't know. I was just thinking then it would be up to her discretion or, right, you know, that's like, true. I don't know. Because most towns don't seem to enforce it, really. You know? That would be, uh, right. I think that would be yeah, something that's subject yeah. to a fine. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, because then that kind of, actually, you change shall to may. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I changed shall to may, and now it becomes, so if you can't find right. anything, it's you're not going to find them. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. But you may, if you do find something, yeah. you may find them. Right. Wow. You could even, I like that one change alone. Yeah. What, what, what it solves that, a lot of issues. Was that the health inspector may investigate? Or? Uh, no. This is in regards to the fines. So any person who violates any provisions of these pest management regulations shall, is the way it's written right now, yeah. be subject to a fine. We just changed shall to may. Because if you can't find anything, then Absolutely. that gives her the authority to not have to find them because I couldn't find anything right. findable. Right. Rather than I shall. Yeah. And even if she does, well, I mean, then it means even if she does find something, she may not find. That's that may be problematic with town council. See, I think I, I, don't, I, don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. Under what circumstances are you? Under what yeah, circumstances is, are yeah. you? Right. I yeah. think if it's if we, I mean, this is assuming we know it's a right in section eight B. It's assuming we know there's a violation. In which case, I think we should keep shell there. I think, mm -hmm. but I do like the. I mean, there is, it's almost like um, Section 7C has been worded that if the health agent finds that investigation is warranted. So maybe you decide this investigation isn't warranted until either it's not warranted because we happen to know that this one person is just calling every day without any justification or reason. You know, it's up to your discretion to figure out whether or not this investigation is warranted. Are you looking for the, uh, be, uh, a way to respond to someone who calls you every day? What have you done about this complaint? What have you done about this complaint? What have you done? Because that's a hard thing to, and uh, to, to, that can be a pain in the neck for you to be responding to all the time. I, I think you should be able to just say, I've investigated this to the extent of my authority or whatever, and I've not found any violations, so I can't do anything else, um, yeah. you know? That's my fear, yeah. is that somebody's going to continue to, to take up her time. Yeah, so yeah. give her the I'm tool. I'm not even worried about the time, it's just I don't want to issue somebody a ticket because they were honest where the other, and they, they were using the chemicals where the other person was using the chemicals, but yeah. I'm not going to give you well, the information or I don't want to tell you. Sending them the regulation first, right? So, yeah. They, I mean, then it is, it's on them to. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind Correct of the point of the first action. notice, is it? But what if they, if they, what if they watch this and they now know that they right. don't have to tell us the truth? I, I see your point. But so my answer is no, I don't use it. Okay. Yeah. It's Maybe when you call the, it, when you call the applicator, the person well, who's licensed. I think that's isn't required to tell me what they use, so they okay. say, I don't want to give that to you. We say, okay. I just I think that's going to be a minority of... I think it will be a minority, but I do think that if you're writing a policy, you want it at least in principle to... I know I'm not allowed to say you can use or not use this person. So if... I do appreciate not wanting to punish someone who is willing to provide that information sure. and punishing someone who is willing to provide that information. So, so yeah. So then... Give them a, a pass on the first time. violation. Okay, so the yeah, first so time... So they admit and fess up and they say, we did it, um, you get, you know, you know, there will be no fine. Um, right, if 
it's just don't use it again. Right. If we learn that you're using it again. Right. But if they're, they're their own evidence that they're using it. <laughs> right, so if you're honest, you're going to take it. If you lie, you don't? No, 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 no. Um, you, you don't, you don't, you just get a, uh, so you got the letter. Now you kept doing it. Then what happens? Well, if they now do I call it, you yeah. and say, yeah, I'm still doing it. Well, then, it's my ad. I'm going to do what I want. Well, then you got to find them. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's and they're the, willfully. They're willfully. willfully. And so then yeah. if the person... doesn't matter. If wait, let's talk about... Right. So what happens when the person continues to use the banned product and doesn't provide any evidence? Either way. And we're saying you have it's to just, tell us what you're using. I mean, in that yeah, case, do we We don't know if they're using the banned product. They're just not giving the they're, information. Yeah. Somebody that's what, yeah. There's been a complaint and then against the property owner and the property owner isn't giving you anything. And now they right. can come in and they can see in their file who complained about them so that they'll walk into the with their name on it. Sorry. Oh, no. Right. I answered the, the it. The tree. <laughs> and the tree home owned up. by the town. Just, you know, the tree. So it's the town. the right to put in regular, I don't know, the town owns the land or? Technically, they don't even have to cut the grass. The town yeah. should be doing it. Yes, I yeah. thought of that many times. <laughs> DPW might want to get in on that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, has anyone contacted like some of the com commonly used applicators and just asked, said, what do, you what do you think about this? Would you be willing to comply? Yeah. You know, with, yeah. you know Cooperate with this. I think most of them don't. Like, no, I think that was going to be part of the rollout of this. Yeah, they may say yes. Oh, I think they most likely think, would. Yeah, I think it's such a minimal thing for them just yeah. to not. Well, some time ago, yeah. Nancy Doctor did send them a letter saying that it was already banned and that it was already voted on. Well, that's not. So really? Because there was a lawsuit in town, actually, because the person owned a corn a lot, and they were like, mm -hmm. "Well, why, why charge me that if the mm -hmm. Board of Health banned it? I'm like, we didn't ban it." Yeah, I'm not sure that, that applies right now, um, because it's not in it's not a regulation, it's not in, in force, um, and I I don't know what Nancy said or didn't say. I have a copy of it if you need it. Um, but the f the question is, would would they, you know, if they got a call from say Kevin or something and said, hey, would you guys cooperate with this? Yeah, I think we always discussed it. If we rolled this out, that would be the first, um, the first thing to do is to inform the companies yeah. that, that we did so. Because right, yeah. that's the last thing we want to do is actually create offenses for this. <laughs> yeah. So that's obviously, I think, um, job number one upon adopting this is to do just that. Yeah. Is to send them. We can just we can just email them this. Um, so that they have but if I go records. to Home Depot and get Roundup, that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's fine. Yeah. I don't even live in Reading, so you don't have to worry about what I'm doing. Yeah, that's no, I don't want you to. But just make sure if anybody calls, you say no. <laughs> so, okay. So let's let's kind of get back on track here. Okay. Um, we got a, a, a okay. few right. amendments that we've got before us. We've, we're going to add in the language to section seven complaints. Uh, we're going to make it a new number B and then make push down B and C to the yeah. C and D. Um, we're changing seven. wording. A, we're, we're adding upon written. Thank you. Yeah, seven A, we're adding upon written in between investigation and complaints. And then we still are trying to. Then I think we're just. I think everything else is. <coughs> When's our next meeting? So Emmy's going to take a stab at the draft, and is the goal to. So that works out well. Okay, good. Because I put a placeholder in for us for the 26th for the select board. Oh, okay. So we actually Perfect. don't necessarily need to vote on this tonight. Because we, we weren't going to, we can get it cleaned up. I'd prefer to have a version passed out that we're that we done. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we can all see and, 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 and vote on that. Um, Sounds good. Okay. What is it, Emmy? The 25th? 25th is our meeting, and then the select board meeting. Is the 26th, is the, the night after. Right. So that would actually, that ties in well. 
make sure you get it on the agenda. Yeah. That night. Uh, I was just about to say, Bob may not have um, um, told you yet, but he just he emailed me late one of these nights over the weekend. Uh -huh. I said, put it in for the 26th, because I think your next one, you guys are fairly packed. Yeah, we are yeah. fairly packed. Yeah. So 26 is perfect. Yeah, okay, good. So that works out well for us, too, because that gives us an, ex an extra meeting. To I, I just I always hate making amendments that are on paper. Yeah. Somewhere. That's <laughs> yeah. policy. And then just have them pop. That's regulation. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. So between now and then, I mean, you were going to clean this yeah, up for I'll us, clean right? It up. I'll get it to Laura. Yes, and she, can and she can distribute it to us. It. If we have changes, we can send them back to Laura. And then they have to sit. And then they have to sit. <laughs> okay, that's all right. So long as we have, we have it. So for the 25th, so long as we can put it up on the screen here, and we can we can edit right on the fly if, if some of those, if, if, if there's yeah. something other lingering shells and maze that need to be <laughs> modified. Okay. Okay. What, what kind of time frame are we looking at? From, in, in regards to what, Julie? Um, so, I mean, if you get it to us in the next week. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we got a long weekend in here, so it gets a little tricky. Um, a week from today would be February 4th. Yeah. Laura sends it out February 4th. We would want comments back by Thursday the 14th. Okay. Anybody should have comments, you know, like a week. Yeah, to it's, plenty, get it should, it back. Should, yep. it's plenty of time. Yep. yep. And then that way we can have it all buttoned up before the long weekend. Then we'll come back and it'll be a condensed week that should, the packets will have to get out over that condensed week. And then we meet the following Monday. Yeah, and if we could just have the, um, the whiteboard ready for that night in case we do need to. Do any kind of further editing on the fly? Oh, okay. Who would do that? Whoever I can do that. Just need, need the connection. Just need the connection. That's right. The magical connection. Yep. Have that available. That will work. Yeah, we can do that anytime. Okay. Great. Okay. Anything else in regards to that? Anything from the public? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, review of minutes. Everybody have a chance to review the minutes from December seventeenth, to accept the minutes of uh, <laughs> December 17, 2018. <laughs> we had a second. I it. <laughs> All those in favor? 3-0. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, I'll second. There you go. All those in favor? We are adjourned.